Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to Show It Better. My name is Steven. And in today's video, we're going to see how to create this aerial illustration using SketchUp and Photoshop. So let's start. I just wanted to remember that if you want the files, the Photoshop files and the long form video, you can go to my Patreon where you have the files and long form videos of all of our tutorials. So that is available to you guys. Today I want to explain how I created this image, but more than that, I want to explain the thought process behind creating the image, the mistakes I made and how I fixed them and you know how I ended up with that image. Okay, so this all started when I was looking on Pinterest and I saw this image from this project that you guys are seeing right now. It's a project that was published in our daily. It's called Tirana 2020. It's by these architects. And it's a very, very nice project, but I, what I like the most is the representation of the project, how they chose the colors, etc. Uh, I really like these type of images and I was like, all right, you know, what is, the, what is the, the magic of this image? Why do I like it so much? Every day we see tons of aerial images, tons of diagrammatic images, we see tons. But this one, in some sort of way, went like kind of viral on Pinterest and a lot of people started started pinning it. And I see it almost like every, every week, I see that image that is pinned by another person. So I was like, all right, so I need to know how this image was done. So I took one of my projects, my urban thesis project, and I tried to make the same image having that as reference. I started making the image and this is what this was, it, what it was turning out as. It was horrible. It really didn't look great at all. I really didn't like it. And I was like, all right, so let me just try to understand this image. Like what, seriously, what is the magic? What, what does it have that I like? And that, how can I replicate that? With that being said, I just want to show you guys this series of images that I published with this project and maybe show you guys what I think was the magic of this project, right? So first of all, it had a consistent grass texture. It also had uh, a significant amount of pine trees or, you know, very, very identical pine trees with the same colors. It was an aerial view. The majority of them were aerial views. Very few were actual perspectives. And it had, you know, a specific color palette. The trees were in different colors. It had a lot of detail when, when it comes to people and cars. So it had a lot of detail in the buildings as well and it didn't seem random. So having analyzed that, I went into my 3D program and I also wanted to create my own kind of version of this. I didn't want to, I didn't want to replicate it exactly. So I created a base clay render or an ambient occlusion render, which if you go to V-Ray, the settings, you can just click on material override and all the materials will be kind of whitish color or you can select the material you, you want. I also exported the line file and the clay render in a very big size, about 4,000 pixels wide. 5,000 pixels wide, I think, because, well, I really wanted a very big image, a very detailed image that you could zoom in and see many images inside as well. So I imported these images into Photoshop and I overlaid the line layer over the render layer and I set it to multiply. After this, I wanted to insert a grass texture, a homogeneous, is that how you say it? A homogeneous uh, grass texture. So what I did, different from what I usually do with the wand tool, I selected all the areas that had grass, then I created a new layer. And then on that new layer, I colored white, black, whatever, it doesn't really matter. Then you right click on top of that new layer and go to blending options. Then you go to pattern overlay, and then you select a pattern that is a grass texture. Now you're like, okay, so how do I get that grass texture that I want, that personal grass pattern? So you just import it into Photoshop and set it as a pattern. That's it. It's very, very simple. So I repeated this process with uh, the, the road texture. You know, it's, I selected all the roads, then I created a new layer, then I, I filled up that layer with any random color. Then with the pattern overlay, I created a pattern with the road texture that I wanted. Then after I had imported all the textures, it was time for the trees. I knew that the trees had a significant role in this image. So what I did was I created in my own type of pine tree brush and I started painting it all over, well, where the trees were going to go. And at first I just were paint, was painting one by one. Eventually I got really tired and I started, I went to my brush my brush settings, then just the dynamics of that brush, uh, turned on the scatter option, and every time I clicked, 10 trees appeared. So that's mostly what you would, what you would wanna do as well. So you can save up a lot of time. Then another thing I did, which I identified was, I also painted in some trees with different colors, and specifically two different colors, not a lot of different colors, but just two more. So I had the pine tree that was dark, dark green, then I also had uh, a yellow tree, like a yellowish tree, a yellowish brownish tree. 
and a light green, like a very saturated green. So those were the three colors I had for the trees. And as soon as I painted it, I knew that I, ha I had that look that I wanted to achieve that was similar to the image. Finally, I also added some textures for the pedestrian paths that were there. So it was a warmer texture, but it wasn't really that complicated. It was the same process that we had used before. And eventually I added some people. Since this was a very, you know, since the person here, this image was very, very small, I didn't invest a lot of time in, you know, putting different types of people in my brush because eventually no one would ever see that. So I just, uh, with the same person, the same person in the brush, I did was the same thing as with my tree. I just selected a white color and then started painting people where I knew it would be visible from afar and from up close as well. And finally, I was trying to see, you know, what makes this image like pop out, stand out from the rest from afar. And that was a highlight color, right? So in each of the images, there was a highlight color that uh, highlighted, well, a certain part, a certain building or a certain uh, area that was the center of that image. So I did the same thing. So I selected the library that I, that was my project. I also said it selected some pedestrian paths and some first floors of each building and I painted them red. Red because I, th I thought, well, obviously I, at first I thought about it red, but I think red makes a nice contrast with green and white colors. And as soon as, soon as you paint them red in another layer, you wanna set this layer to multiply so you can see everything that is behind all the lines that are behind. As soon as I finished doing this, I really liked the result. I really liked the image. I thought that was the image I was looking for. I replicated and I tried to replicate it with other other types of images like these to see if you know if it was a, cons a consistent look that I could achieve. And eventually, you know, eventually I noticed that it, it can be achieved and it looks very, very nice, very interesting. Obviously it has to be a certain type of project. Maybe an architectural project won't look the same because this is a more this was a more of a urban scale where you know all the trees and all the grass made a big impact on the visual aesthetic of the image and well that was about it that was that was the whole tutorial it was very simple it was really basic i mean these are things that we have talked about in this channel before but uh it's when when you deconstruct the images that you like that you understand like what you really like about them sometimes we just like the images but we don't understand why we like them most specifically makes our brain like that image so it's interesting to dissect these images and take them as reference and use them in your own projects as well and obviously give credits where credit is due obviously so these images i well i didn't make them just for fun i was making a course i was making a presentation boards course uh, a master class if you will for more than three hours it's uh, more than three hours long this is not a specific promotion for that course but in case you're interested, just in case you're interested, I made a course. I made a course on presentation boards where we see many types of presentation boards, about more than seven examples of presentation boards, main image, uh, grid composition, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. How, how to make them in InDesign and how to learn InDesign from scratch. So if you wanna see how, how the presentation boards turned out and everything, you can click the link down below. Or if you just want the PSD file of this image and the real-time video, you can go to our Patreon page and have access to that as well. And that was it. That was it. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for making it to the end of the video. I have nothing else to say. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in a next video. So maybe I hadn't, I haven't, uh, I think I have two videos on my YouTube channel that has like this set. So I think I never talked about that with you. And uh, it's weird. It's weird being on so many different types of sets in such a few amount of months and you know, not really talking about it. So. This is a new like library I, I, I got because I didn't have places to store my books in. And this is a, this is a lamp that I got. It's, a, it's, it's kind of a stairs, a concrete stairs and on top it has a, you know, a light bulb. So I inserted this LED light bulb that you know, has different colors and I think it looks nice. And I'm, I'm trying to find a poster for this area because it's kind of, kind of empty, but I'm not sure what to do yet. So yeah, that's a brief, that's a brief um, tour of my studio for anyone that is really watching this until the end, which I think not so many of you are here, but it, okay, so you're here already. Why don't you just like the video, maybe subscribe if you want to, or if you don't, well, you know, press on that I don't like this video, Steven, because you know, whatever. What I suggest you guys do is Take some old magazines, like some old, well, these aren't old, but you know, for the people in university, maybe they're old. But for me, it's like, it's like when I was studying. So these are, you know, 
AV project uh, thingies and they have a lot of cool images, a lot of cool presentation styles, you know, color palette styles. Uh, you know, this I think was, it was all, all, also always something that I liked. I don't know if it's focused or not, whatever. But uh, this is good. This is good for, for reference. And if you guys like it, maybe you should. If you guys like it, maybe you should take a look at old magazines instead of Pinterest or not, right? So um, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.